Do you want to know if your social media strategy for e-commerce website is working? In the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about using Metricool to analyze data from your e-commerce website. My name is Elise Nelson and I help tech challenge makers build a profitable e-commerce brand. Thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel where I offer lessons that are 15 minutes or less to help you grow your e-commerce shop. In this short video, I'm going to share with you how to know what works using Metricool data and analytics. Before we jump into this maker lesson, I would love to know how often you look at the analytics from your e-commerce website, you know, jumping into those numbers. Leave a comment and let me know. I want to start by jumping into some awesome things not to miss when looking at your website data and analytics on Metricool. So the very first thing is to know that you can change your dates. I recommend using the same number of days when you are looking at your analytics. So I like to use the last 30 days. If you do decide to go to current month, previous month, etc., keep in mind that those months have a different number of days, 28, 30, 31. And so you're not actually comparing apples to apples, so just keep that in mind. So we're going to go with the last 30 days. The next thing is that you can show and hide specific metrics. So for example, right now, I cannot see this pink line very well. It is covered by other things. So if I turn everything else off, look at how suddenly I can see these uh, peaks and valleys in this particular metric. And this allows me to see where my visitors were higher and lower, whereas when I had these other ones turned on, it was more difficult to see that. So you can turn these on and off simply by clicking them so that you can see more detailed information about one specific type of data. You can also, you can also sort by column label. So if I come down to traffic, I can choose to sort by access or by percent. And this allows me to change how I'm sorting. So I can sort by URL itself and switch this around. You can also change how many rows you're showing. So if I wanted to show 10 instead of five, I can do that. And you can go through these by using little carrots. All right, so let's go ahead and come up here and look at our actual analytics. So we have our total page views. So this is all of the page views during this specific time period. You can see the number of visits here as well. And then you can see our visitors. So the visitors is the actual number of people. The visits is the number of times they came. And the page views is the number of pages they looked at while they were there. So our page views per visitor right here tells me that each visitor looked at approximately 1.6 pages which explains why the number of visitors is smaller than the number of page views and the number of visits. We can also look at our daily page views right here. So this is telling me that 6.3 um, page views per day are daily visits. So um, there are 4.27 visits and during the, each of those visits, they looked at six pages. And then it also tells me the daily visitors. So when looking at these metrics, what this would mean to me is, on average, 3.93 shoppers came to your site 4.27 times and looked at 6.3 total pages, okay? Before we jump into the rest of the lesson, please like this video. Also, be sure to stick with me to the end of the video to learn your challenge for today and implement what you have learned. The next metric we're gonna look at is our post. And so this is going to be your blog post is what this talks about. Your comments are going to be the number of comments you had on the blog posts. And the comments per post are going to tell you how many comments you got per post. Um, you can also look at your post per week, and that's going to tell you how many times you're posting. So you can see here this says zero. That is because my particular website is not connected to the blog. So that's why you're not seeing any of these here. But you may have this data on yours. So that's why I wanted to point it out. Then we can come down and look at our visitor countries. And this is going to tell you where most of your people are coming from. So you can see here it's the United States. Then we're going to come down to our page views. So here in the page views, it's going to tell you which pages people are looking at. And you want to be thinking about why they're looking at those pages. So I'm going to go ahead and sort this by page views. And you can see this is my home page and it has the most page views. So then you want to ask yourself, am I sending people to my home page that I really don't want to go to my home page? I'd rather that they went to a product page or a collection page or some other page. And then keep in mind where they're going and why. And if they land on that specific page, where do you want them to go? And do you have a link or button that directs them there? And is that obvious? So I can see that this specific collection, all, which is showing all of my products, is 13% of my web visitors. So once they're there, am I making it clear where they should go next? Um, this blog, how to use your Devil Clip water bottle holder. 
is 7.94% of my traffic? Am I directing them to the next thing if they land on that blog page? So you wanna make sure that you are really directing them to the next step that is really important with your website. These metrics are great for understanding um, what pages people are looking at. And I really recommend that you pay attention to these because this can tell you where you need to invest some more time. If there's a specific page that people are always going to, you wanna make sure that that page is doing the right thing by sending them to the next step. But this is the point at which you then have to investigate your Google Analytics. Because on Google Analytics, you can tell if they are entering your site on that page. So if I know that they are starting on my homepage, so I am at, they're actually coming to my homepage first, they haven't looked at another page, that means something is directing them to my homepage. And I need to see what that is and see if maybe I need to change that direction. So for example, if your social media is linking them directly to your homepage, is that really where you want them to go? Maybe it would be better if you sent them to your shop all collection, right? So you wanna be thinking about that. You can also see where they're exiting from. So if someone goes to say this page and 95% of the people that go to this page are leaving your website after seeing this page, you need to think about why that is. Can you direct them somewhere else instead of losing them altogether? If they are not entering from that particular page, they're coming there from somewhere else. So for example, if my people that are coming to my homepage actually started on the shop page and then they went to my homepage, that tells me that they're interested in what I'm doing. And that means I'm actually doing something well. If they're then proceeding to exit from my homepage, I have to ask myself, am I missing an opportunity while they're on my homepage to get them to do something else, right? So you, knowing where they start from and where they go to can be really useful. On um, Google Analytics, you can also look at every single page and tell how likely they are to make a purchase after they visit that page. So if you find that there's one particular product that every time someone looks at it, they make a purchase, and it may not even be for that product. They may look at that product and then go to a different product and buy the second product, but that first product is the thing that for some reason when they look at it, it gets them to buy something else. That is really important information to have. If going to that page gets them to be more likely to buy because there's something unique on that page, then you want to send more people to that page. Or maybe you want to replicate what that page is doing on another page. And so knowing how likely they are to make a purchase when they visit each of these pages is really important. So for example, when they go to the shop all page, if that page means they're going to make a purchase because they got to see all of your products, you definitely want to start sending people there, right? So it's important to have this information and this is a further deep dive into Google Analytics and I can help you with that. I do Google Analytics review calls if you wanna do that further deep dive. But here in Metrical, they do give you some amazing information to get you started that is easier to kind of understand and break down. So if you know most of your people are going to your homepage, think about why that is and what you can do to get more sales if people are landing on your homepage. Now, if you want more help with your e-commerce brand, be sure to subscribe and sign up for notifications on my YouTube channel where I offer lessons that are 15 minutes or less to help you grow your e-commerce shop. We will be going into a series next all about your website, so I highly recommend you stick with me and sign up for notifications so you'll be able to see that information about your website. So then our next thing here in our analytics is our traffic source. And so this is going to tell us where your traffic is coming from and um, are your sales coming from that same place? Remember, just because you're getting good traffic, sorry, just because you're getting traffic doesn't, I'm going to start that again. So our next thing we're going to look at here in analytics is your traffic source. And this is going to tell you where your traffic is coming from. But remember, just because your traffic is coming from there doesn't mean that's where your sales are coming from. So just because you're getting traffic doesn't mean it is good traffic, which is why it's so important after you look at this to further investigate with Google Analytics. So let's look at this particular one. I can see that 17 pe um, people or 17 visits came from Facebook and that's 10% of my traffic. So by looking at just this, I might think Facebook is an excellent traffic source for me. But if it turns out that those people that come from Facebook never buy, it is not worth it to me for them to come there. Um, meanwhile, Instagram may only have one, one visit, but maybe every time someone comes from Instagram, I get a sale. Well, that would tell me I need to double down on Instagram instead of Facebook, even though my stats say that Facebook is a better traffic source. And so these are things that you can investigate with Google Analytics. You can investigate your traffic source that has the highest purchase conversion and then do more there, right? Don't spend as much time on places that don't get you sales. 
you can figure out which traffic sources result in your highest bounce rate. In case you don't know what that means, it means that people leave your site after viewing just one page and stop focusing on those traffic sources. So if my bounce rate for Facebook was 99%, even though I'm sending 17 people as opposed to one, 99% means that that one, that maybe one person looked at stuff. Probably not even. So I may actually have two good visitor, one good visitor from Facebook and one good visitor from Instagram, even though Facebook sent more people. So knowing where your bounce rates are highest and knowing where your purchase conversion is highest can really help you understand where to double down and where to spend more time for your business to get those sales and to get those new people in your audience, in your shoppers, right? The other thing you can look at from your website is your real-time data. So right up here in the upper right corner, I can click on real-time and it's going to bring me to the real-time section of my analytics for my website. But there's actually a second place that you can go to get to this data. So I'm gonna show you both places and they look a little bit different. So here under evolution, I can click on real time and it looks like this, okay? All of this same exact data is if I go to real time up here at the top and I am on web blog. It's laid out differently, but it is all the same information. And so here you're gonna be able to see your visitors, your page views, your visits. You're gonna be able to see your countries right down here. And this is again, this is the, your your real time data. So you can't change the times here. This is what it is. Um, you can also see your page views. So how many uh, views were there today and your traffic sources. So this says it was direct traffic. And so this is a more current right now what's happening type of look at your analytics for your website. Now today's question was, how often do you look at the analytics from your e-commerce website? Leave a comment and let me know. Don't forget to watch my last YouTube video about how to use metrical messages to manage communications with your customers. In the next series, we will be discussing how to optimize your e-commerce website to get more sales. Now, if you want help understanding your website analytics, you can get a one-on-one -on -one website analytics call with me. Just click the link in the description and I will help you understand your Google Analytics and take this whole thing for metrical analytics into a much higher realm. And we can really narrow down on what's getting you sales and where you should be spending more time. So give you your next steps for what you should be working on in your business. Now your challenge for today is to go to analytics.google.com and look at your audience overview. So you're gonna on the left-hand column, you're gonna click audience and then overview for the last 30 days. How many visitors have you had to your site? And are you surprised by that number? Comment on this video and let me know. And just one side note that I see happen with a lot of makers. Um, if you visit your site a lot, you are impacting your, your numbers. You're gonna wanna make sure that you get the correct, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you block yourself, that you are not impacting your numbers. You need to know who's visiting your site that's not you. And if you have employees, you don't want them to be impacting your numbers either. Um, if you'd like help with that, be sure to join the Facebook group and ask. And I have a post in there I can tag you on that shows you exactly how to block your visits from your site so that you're not impacting your data. Don't forget to live your dream every single day and I will see you in the next video.